hey there, clever scientists. We are going to talk about how materials fail. So what you need for this experiment is a notebook and a pen. I've got my trusty rocket book here. You'll need a protractor. This is my favorite kind with the ruler built in so that you can see through the protractor with the lines that go all the way from the center of it to the outside because we're going to be measuring slope angles. This will be a very helpful kind, but if this is what you have, totally okay. You'll need a variety of different materials. I'm going to start with some dry sand and I also have a bucket of dry bird seeds. So we're going to work with those. You can work with mud, you can work with gravel. It's a really good idea to find a variety of materials and I'll tell you what we're going to do with them as an extension on the experiment after we get through the first part of it. You're also going to need some kind of big tub. Now I've got a big plastic tub here so that you can see through the sides of it, but a cardboard box lined with tin foil or one of those foil turkey pans that you can get from the supermarket works just fine. All right, you're also going to need some water and you're going to need something that has some weight to it. So I've just got an apple here. You could use a rock, whatever you have lying around that you don't mind getting a little dirty. You can probably wash it off later. So we're going to be measuring the angles of slopes and see if we can figure out anything about how slopes fail and what makes slopes fail, depending on what we do to that angle. So first things first, I'm going to take my sand and just pour it into my bucket. And you'll notice as I'm pouring that it is going to make a cone of sand in my bucket and that the slope of that cone of sand stays relatively consistent. There's a reason for that. So pour all the sand in your bucket. All right. And now what I want you to do is before you touch it, you've just poured it in here. This is its resting angle. I want you to measure the angle of the dry sand. So you're going to write down on your notebook here, dry sand. And then you're going to take your protractor and measure the angle of that slope. So you're going to have to get down low and look at it across the angle of the sand. You might even put the protractor into the sand slope and measure the angle from the base of the slope, where should be the center of the protractor, all the way up the slope. And I'm getting an angle of about 35 degrees. So I want to hear what you've got. The next thing I want you to do is try to make that sand pile go up higher than 35 degrees. So take your hands and sculpt it and see if you can get the sand to a higher angle than 35 degrees. So continue to do that and measure the angle. And I want you to tell me the highest angle that you got of the sand resting in a slope. So I'll give you some time to go do that. So you should have found that no matter what you did to that dry sand, you couldn't get the angle higher than that initial angle when you poured it into the bucket. You might have gotten it a few degrees higher, maybe two, but it probably shouldn't have gone much higher than 35 degrees. That's because that's the angle of repose for sand grains. For these little grains of sand, that's the angle at which they are stable, just sitting together against each other. So we can do lots of different things to affect the stability of this slope. The first thing that I want you to do is take your hand and scoop away part of the bottom of the slope and observe what happens. So I'm gonna scoop it away right here. I'm gonna scoop away the bottom part of the slope. You do this with me on your sand so you can see it. And tell me what happens when we scoop all the sand away from one side of that slope. Here we go, ready? So what I saw in here was that the sand from the top of the slope filled back in where I had scooped away. It didn't leave a nice, a nice smooth edge. It just rolled down the slope and filled it back in. And it looks like it's back at its angle of repose. So one way that we can make a slope unstable is by taking away the material at the bottom of the slope. Okay, here's another way we can make the slope unstable. We're gonna take a heavy object we're going to put it on top of the slope and watch what happens to those sand grains. Here we go. 
Now what I saw was sand grains that fell down the side of my slope because I put this heavy object on the top of my slope. That's what you should have seen too. And that's what happens out in the world. No matter what kind of material we have, each material has an angle of repose. And if you scoop away the bottom or cut out the side of the hill, it's going to want to fall back to its angle of repose. It's going to want to have a little landslide. And if you put something heavy on top of the hill, you've put an extra load that that sand or that material has to carry. And so it's going to want to fall down the edges again, creating another landslide. Okay. So how can we make our material more robust? How can we increase that angle of repose? Here's where that water comes in. So now I want you to take your water, I want you to add little bits at a time. If you've played with sandcastles on a beach, you can probably predict what's going to happen. So we're gonna add a little bit of water to the sand, not too much water. And then I want you to take that sand that's slightly wet and see what kind of stable angle you can make with that sand. And you should be able to find that you can make a 90 degree angle. That, that sand will stand straight up in lines because the water is binding those grains together and holding them in place. Where before the dry grains just fell, these bonded grains have water that's holding them together and helping create that structure. So now, what I want you to do, so a little bit of water increases the angle of repose. What if we put too much water in it? What if we get it sloppy wet? I want you to do that. I want you to saturate the material in your bucket and measure the angle of repose again and see what happens. Are you ready? So what you find, playing with the sand under the water down here where it's completely saturated, what you find when you play with completely saturated material is that it can't hold very much of an angle of repose at all. And in fact, it's probably less when you measure it than the original angle of the dry material that you were playing with. This is the problem when it rains too much. When it rains too much and the soil gets saturated with water, all of a sudden, now instead of holding the grains together, the water is pushing the grains apart so they have no structural stability and the slopes will fail and you'll get landslides. Now that you know the different things that affect the stability of materials, you can start playing with the other materials that you gathered. So I've got bird seed here. The first thing that you want to do is pile it up and see what is the highest angle of a slope that you can make from that material. Different materials are going to have different, what are called angles of repose, those stable angles of the slopes. So I've got bird seed here, and I'm piling it up into the center of my bin. And you can see on the edge of the bin here, we can actually measure the angle on the edge of the bin. And it looks like the angle of the bird seed pretty similar to the angle of the sand. I'm really not surprised by that because these bird seed grains, I've got the little millet grains in here that are these little round grains act just like the sand grains. And there are some sunflower seeds in here, um, but the millet grains are really what is affecting the slope stability in this case. Now, if I were to do this with gravel, with larger pieces, they're more angular pieces, I would probably have um, a higher angle of repose. If you drive by a construction yard, you can see the different piles of materials they have. Those piles are all sitting at their angles of repose. So you can see visually the different angles that materials have when they're sitting. So play with your materials. See what angles you can make when they're dry and get them a little wet. See if that affects it. Scoop out the end, the bottom side of it. See what that does to it. Put a load on top of it. Put a weight on top of it and see what that does to the angle. Some of the materials, if they're more stable, if they have higher angles of repose, you're going to have to put more weight on top of them to make them fail. Um, so experiment with that, play around with that, and see what you can discover about the properties of the materials that you have there. I hope you enjoyed exploring a little bit about what's called mass wasting. It's mass movements of the earth by exploring different materials properties, looking at their critical angles, 
um, and figuring out what we can do to make them more stable and what we can do to make them less stable. Thanks for joining.